Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D Now. So Gearbase sent over this printer for a review, and this is Anycubix Mega X, which is one of their newest 3D printers. It's a very, very big printer. It's actually bigger than the i3 Mega, and it's about the same size as the CR10. The build plate is actually the same size at 300 by 300 millimeters. So this thing is huge. It's a beast. So I actually unboxed this printer live on my YouTube channel, and I'll link that video below if you want to watch it. And that was pretty fun. But in this video, I'm going to do my review and initial thoughts while doing some prints and getting this printer set up. So when I was unboxing this printer, I actually came into a problem where one of the sides of the Z-axis, the screw that touched the Z-axis end stop on one of the corners was actually stuck and I could not turn it in order to level the bed. So I had to jiggle it around, add some grease to it, pry it back and forth, turn it back and forth until it finally came loose, but eventually it did. But after that, the printer was up and running and ready to start printing. But first, let's talk about the specs of the Mega X, which is a beast. Like I said before, it has a huge build plate, which is 300 by 300, and it can print 305 millimeters in the Z axis. Also, it has an ultra base, which I love. I'll talk about a little bit more later, which is a very, very cool bed surface that actually has pores that contract and expand in order to grip the material and let the print go when it's cooled down. It has dual Z-axis lead screws with two limit switches. So in both sides level, it actually levels both sides individually. So the X-axis gantry is perfectly parallel to the bed and flat. Also, it has a filament runout sensor, which is awesome. It has power failure recovery mode, and it has an LCD touchscreen, which is pretty cool. The frame is extremely rigid, made of metal, and is super, super solid on a table. In addition, it has a quality extruder assembly. It has a little clamp so you can pull and release the tension to put your filament up. It has a gear to manually push the filament through. It has a tensioning knob. It's very good quality. So the Mega X has a 12 volt meanwhile power supply. It's not 24 volt, but in my experience, the bed and nozzle heated up very quickly. And it's also nice having a name brand power supply like a meanwhile. Moving on, this has awesome bed leveling knobs. They're pretty big, just like the newer Ender 3s. So you have plenty of room to turn them and level each corner of the bed. Also, this has a pretty standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle and 1.75 millimeter filament. A cool addition is an angled spool holder, which actually angles the spool and the filament path into the filament runout sensor and straight up the back into the extruder gears. This printer is Bowden style, with a PTFE tube running to the hot end assembly. And also it features a quick change extruder, which means the extruder, the heater block, the thermistor on the extruder, the fans are all plugged in via quick connectors. So you can actually unplug the extruder and put a new one in very, very quickly. This printer actually comes with two full hot ends. The hot end also has a heater block sock, which is pretty cool and it has adjustable rubber feet on the base of the printer, so you can adjust it to be level and stable on your table or surface. Finally, it has an SD card slot and USB to print over. Let's take a look at one of the Mega X's big features, which is their color touchscreen. So the menu on the Mega X has these fairly big icons. I made it pretty easy to navigate and has all the features you need to control your 3D printer. This specific touchscreen, just like most other 3D printer touchscreens, is not very sensitive, so you may have to press it a few times to get a response, but it is very colorful, and the graphics are pretty cool, I think. I do have one complaint, that the back buttons are pretty inconsistent on the different menu screens. Like on some screens, it's in the top left corner, while in others, it's on the bottom middle or in the bottom right. So I do think it would be better if the back buttons were more consistent on all the different screens. Now let's go over some prints that I made on the Mega X. And after that, I'll wrap it up with my opinions and thoughts on the Anycubic Mega X. But right now it's time for my favorite part, the print montage. 
So without further ado, here are some of the prints I got off the Anycubic Mega X. So the first print I did on this printer, of course, is the 3D Benchy, the benchmark. And this turned out fairly well, although there were some layer inconsistencies along the Z axis. So I did loosen up the Z lead screw nuts a little bit, and that fixed this issue on the next prints. And the Benchy does look good. The bottom layer stuck very well, and you can easily read the letters on the bottom. And that's because the Ultra Base holds down these parts super well, and then pops them off the bed automatically so you can just pick the part off with no force at all. The next print were the action pliers and this I actually made a mistake on myself when slicing it. I actually scaled down the model a little bit so the tolerances are not correct and so they can not open and close but these do look pretty cool. There was a little bit of over extrusion on the top and I did change that in my slicer settings but this does look fairly good. You can see the ultra base texture on the bottom of the print. And overall, it's a cool looking model. And for the next print, I wanted to change up the material. So I put in some filament one PETG, which turned out very good. There was some stringing, which of course I had to adjust on the profile, but the ultra base again held down this PETG with no problems at all. It had no warping. And again, the print popped off with ease after the bed was cooled down. The sides of the print look fairly good. This clamp actually screwed together with no problems. The threads were correct and went right into the nut. And you can actually see the texture on the knob of the clamp, which is pretty cool. I thought this model turned out fairly well for PETG. Up next is a favorite of mine, which is the twisted vase. And this turned out super, super good. This was actually printed with two perimeters, not one. So it did go around each layer twice, but I thought this filamento material looked super cool. There are no curves on this model, but all those geometric shapes look super cool in the light. And there is almost no stringing in the interior and the bottom looks awesome again with that Anycubic Ultra Base texture and it just popped off the bed with almost no pressure. Finally, I took out my Filament 1 Glint Blue PLA again. This is one of my favorite materials to print with, and I printed out a Baby Yoda. This model looks super, super good. All the different details and textures came out amazing. The glint material and color looks awesome in the light. And I did have to add supports on this, and on the right side, the support did fall off, which did result in the right hand not looking very good. Also, you can see the text very clearly at the bottom of the model and overall, it just looks super, super good. Now let's go over some of my thoughts about using the Mega X. So first off, this thing is a beast. It is super sturdy and built like a tank. The frame is made of full metal. I believe it's steel. All the axes are made with either extruded aluminum or steel rails and they'll be totally comfortable leaving a print for a long time. I did have a small issue in the beginning with one of the screws that touched one side of the Z axis limit switch and I had to get that unstuck. But after that, I got the printer leveled and ready to start printing. Also, one of my favorite features is the Ultra Base. This thing is amazing. It's just like magic. When the bed is hot, the material can stick to the bed super, super well during the print and when the bed cools down, the parts just pop off with no force at all. 
It's awesome and one of the best beds I've ever used on a 3D printer. In addition, like I said before, I think the menu screens need to be reorganized a little bit. Like the back button should be placed at the same spot in every menu screen. And I also like the filament spool holder as well. It's in a pretty good spot. It's angled to allow the filament path to go right into the filament runout sensor and up into the extruder gears. In addition, I had to loosen the two Z-axis lead screw nuts to get some smoother layers like I showed in the Benchy print. And in some of the first prints, I did notice some inconsistent extrusion, but that went away over time after a few prints and with some high quality filament. Overall, I think this printer is great for people that print a lot and need extreme reliability. This would be a fantastic printer for a print farm. Also, you can change the nozzle out for something bigger like a 0.6 or even 0.8 millimeter and that would print some pretty large objects with ease and I'll be very comfortable leaving this printer overnight or on very long prints. And if you are interested in checking out the Mega X, check out the link in the video description below to Gearbest's site. Finally, if you are a beginner and are thinking about getting the Mega X, definitely take a look at my 3D printer setup tips video and I'll link that in the iCard above. Right now, at the time of the video recording, the price of the Mega X is about 350 US dollars, which I think is a great price for a beast of a machine like this. Finally, if you have any other questions or concerns or just want to talk about 3D printing, definitely check out my 3D printing Discord, which I will leave the link for in the video description below. Thanks again to Gearbest for sending this printer out to me for a review. So, thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more 3D printing videos like this. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And I will see you all in the next video.